Hello everyone, welcome to Come Sit at My Table. We are Tom and Melissa, and we're thrilled that you're joining us for this video. Now, if you watched last Sunday's video, you know that last Sunday we started a series that we're calling Super Bowl Sundays. And super is spelled S-O-U-P-E-R because we're making soups for five Sundays in a row the five Sundays before Super Bowl on February 11th. So today, we're doing our second in the series for Super Bowl Sunday. And today, we are making macaroni and cheese soup. Now, I got this recipe years and years and years ago from a friend that we went to church with, and I had her son in my fifth grade classroom, her name's Teresa Jackson, and when she gave me this recipe for macaroni and cheese soup, I'll be honest, I thought to myself, mm, I just don't know about that. I'm not sure that's going to be good. But from the very first time Melissa and I made it, we loved this soup. One thing I really love about this soup is that you can use up leftovers. Now, you don't have to. Uh, the first few times we made it, we just made it with the ingredients. But today you're going to see that a lot of what we're using are things that Melissa and I have had left over from other meals that we're putting into the soup. So it's a good way to use up some leftovers if you have things left. Let's talk about what we're going to put in macaroni and cheese soup. We're going to start with three and a half cups of chicken broth. Then we will add one and a half cups of broccoli florets. And these are just frozen broccoli florets that I had left over in the freezer. This is actually what was in the bottom of the bag. <laughs> and I just wanted to use those up, so I'm using that. Now, if you want to use fresh broccoli, you can certainly chop up a head of fresh broccoli and use it. But frozen broccoli florets work perfectly fine if you've got those in your freezer. The only thing I would tell you to do is to make sure you chop them into bite-sized pieces. You don't want huge pieces of broccoli in this. You want it to be something that you can get on a spoon. So if you're using fresh broccoli or frozen, make sure that you chop it into bite-sized pieces. That's Honestly, that's a little big as far as I'm concerned. Something like this is pretty manageable. So just chop those up before you put them in. Now, the next thing we're going to put in is one cup of diced carrots. And I'm going to dice this one up. And I've already started with one. To get a cup, I only needed two carrots. So I'm just going to dice them. If you want them sliced, you can certainly just slice them rather than dice them. But again, we kind of like for them to be bite-sized. And so I just dice them up into small chunks. That way they fit on our spoon just right and um, they're not too big for somebody to eat. Especially if you have children or grandchildren that are going to be eating this, you'll wanna probably dice these up just to make it easier for them but that's certainly up to you. You can slice them or dice them. And this is one of those recipes that you don't have to have exact amounts. That's exactly right. I am so glad you said that because you're gonna see here in a minute that I've used some extra of things. So you can see that's kind of a heaping cup of carrots and that's fine. Now we have two cups of macaroni and cheese that's already been prepared. This is leftover macaroni and cheese that Melissa had the other night. When we fix cheeseburgers, for example, and we want macaroni and cheese and baked beans to go with it, a lot of times we just open a box of macaroni and cheese, Kraft macaroni and cheese or Velveeta macaroni and cheese. Sometimes it's got elbow macaroni in it. Sometimes it's shells, whatever we have. And this, this is actually homemade that we had left over. But if you've got boxed macaroni and cheese, use it. There's nothing wrong with that. So use what you've got. Then we are going to use one cup of heavy whipping cream. Now this is where you're gonna see that I'm using more than one cup. There's the one cup line. But I had this left in a box from another recipe 
and I don't want to have this much left in the bottom, so I'm just going to use it. It's okay. Throw it in there. So it, that's probably, I don't know, a cup and a quarter, but one cup is all you need. Then you need one cup of Velveeta, and we're going to cube that or shred that to put it in. I don't, I've never measured a cup of Velveeta. I just use what I've got and I chop up some. This is half of a one pound block that I had left from another recipe. You know, if you've got it left over from making cheese dip on Mexican night or whatever. So this is just, you can see literally this is half of a block and that's what I'm gonna use. I'm just gonna cube that up and put it in. Also, I will tell you that when I have leftover Velveeta, I always wrap it back in the package it was in and then I put it in a baggie. Otherwise, the edges really tend to dry out and I can't stand that. So, we're just gonna use that half, I think that was a one pound block. Yes, so we're just using half of that, which will be half a pound. But the recipe actually says one cup of Velveeta. Then we're using two cups of cooked chicken. Again, this is chicken that we had left over. Melissa and I had quesadillas the other night. And, you know, cheese dip goes well with quesadillas. If you have leftover chicken, a rotisserie chicken or a chicken breast or something, just chop it up. That's what we did with this. So this is just leftover chicken from the other night. All right, now let's put this together. We're going to start by putting our chicken broth our broccoli and our carrots in our pan and boil, bringing them to a boil so that it cooks those vegetables. Now my broccoli is frozen. I'm using that straight from frozen. I didn't thaw it, I didn't cook it. I just, I'm putting it straight in. So, We'll get those started. Let me stir those in there. We'll bring that up to a boil, and we're just gonna let that boil for about five minutes or so, just until those carrots become tender. Now, while that's coming to a boil, I'm going to cube up my Velveeta cheese. So I'm gonna just scoop these out of the way for a minute. Gonna take my Velveeta out of the package. Thank you for moving that. I'll get this out of the way too. And I'm just going to cube this up so that it melts faster. If you put it in there as a big chunk, it's going to take a while to melt. So I'm just going to cut it into cubes. And it doesn't have to be precise. Just, it's gonna melt anyway. It's gonna melt. Just chop it up. Now it's still in pretty good sized cubes, so I'm gonna turn it this way and cut down through it that way too. Okay, so that gives us some smaller cubes. There's one I missed. Now, the rest of this is all going to go in after our carrots and broccoli are cooked. So we're going to let those come to a boil. And once they have boiled for four to five minutes, we'll check it when the carrots are done then we will come back and let you see us finish the soup. We'll be right back. Our carrots and broccoli have been boiling for about five minutes. I did turn it down to medium heat once it started boiling because I didn't need it to boil so hard. Now, you wanna make sure that your broccoli and carrots are ready and are done. Now, let me show you how to do that in case you don't know. Just take a carrot, get one carrot out of your soup pot, and take the end of your knife, the point of your knife, and go in. If it goes in with no resistance, it's done. Now, you'll need to do the same with your broccoli if you're using a fresh head of broccoli. Since this is frozen broccoli, I'm not worried about it. I know it's more than done. So, that's ready for us to add everything else. So, are you saying a fresh head of broccoli takes longer than a frozen? It, yeah, it would take a little bit longer. But by the time the carrots are done, the broccoli should be fine. So we're going to add our cubed Velveeta. And you can see it's about a cup. 
It might be a little more than a cup. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Can't hurt it if it's extra cheesy, right? So we're going to put that in. We're going to add our macaroni and cheese that we had left over from dinner the other night. And of course, it's already got cheese in it, so you're getting extra cheese there. And we're just gonna stir that in. You can see this is cold. <laughs> I have not heated this. This is straight out of the refrigerator from leftovers. But it will heat up. I'm just breaking it up here. Once it gets in there, it's going to heat up and break apart. Okay. And we're going to add our heavy cream, our whipping cream. That will help thicken it just a little. And we wanna make sure we stir that in. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be such a good pot of soup. You know, I never make this soup that I don't think about Tommy and Teresa. We've known them for years and years. We were in small group at church with them and that was such a great small group. And then I got the pleasure of having their son, Matt, in my fifth grade class. And you know, if you look up in a dictionary, dream student, I am 100% sure that Matt's picture is right there in the dictionary beside of dream student. He was a dream student. He was just fantastic. I loved having that kid. He's not a kid anymore. He's a grown man and doing really well, but man, I sure was blessed to get to have him in my class. Now we're gonna add our chicken and it's cold. Same thing, it's right out of the refrigerator, it's leftovers. So in it goes. And now all we really have to do is heat this through. Our macaroni and cheese was already cooked, our chicken's already cooked. Um, the, cheddar, the Velveeta has to melt so you do want to make sure that that, whoo, sorry, I splashed that. Um, you just want to make sure that Velveeta has melted. And once it's melted and everything's heated through, you're ready to eat. That's it. So we are going to let this come back up to a simmer. I am going to turn it up just a little bit. Now you've got to be careful. You've got cheese in there now and you don't want that to burn on the bottom. So you will need to stir it every few minutes and you don't want to turn it too high. I'm probably actually going to leave it on medium. But when this comes to temperature and it's ready to eat, we will come back and somebody's going to do a taste test. Guess who? Me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Our macaroni and cheese soup has heated all the way through. The Velveeta is melted. Everything's ready to go. So let's turn our heat off and scoop up some soup. So, how many servings do you think with this recipe would you get from this? Oh my goodness, that's a great question. Um, I would say you could serve at least four if you did huge servings, maybe six. Um, and depending on if you're so serving children. Right, oh yeah, of course. Um, and what you're serving with it. If you're serving sandwiches with it, you wouldn't need as much per person. If you're just having crackers with it, you might want to serve a little more. So easily four, I would think. And this recipe is so easy to double or triple. We've done that before when we've had friends in. It's easy just to throw everything together. What about freezing it? It will freeze. You would think because there's macaroni in it that it wouldn't freeze, but it freezes beautifully. So yeah, you can freeze it. If you have leftovers, put it in individual containers and freeze it, thaw it out, you're ready to eat. Okay. I know Let's, I said I wanted to taste test, but I think I'm gonna have to wait to, soup's a little hard to taste test say, in this position. This. It's a little hard right now. It is, and this is hot. Can you see the steam coming off of it? Yes. <laughs> see the macaroni, the elbow macaroni in there? Mac and cheese soup. Okay. I have to blow on it because it's hot. Oh my gosh, this is so good. 
It's cheesy. The macaroni is delicious. The vegetables, the chicken, mm, it is all really good. And you saw how easy that was, especially if you've got some leftovers you can throw in. That's a great soup. Teresa Jackson, thank you for this recipe. All right, we do appreciate you watching. We would like to encourage you to go right below the video and click the thumbs up. That just says you liked it. Click that share button and share it to your own social media page so your friends and family will see our video. And if you've not already, go below this video and click the subscribe button and the little notification bell in the word all. That just subscribes you to our channel so that you'll always know when we post a new video. Also, right below this video, you'll see the title of this recipe. It'll say macaroni and cheese soup. If you click that title, that box will expand. Melissa always puts the written recipe in that box for you so you don't have to write anything down as we go. And our contact information is below the recipe. Thanks again. We sure do appreciate you being here. We have three more videos the next three Sundays in a row for Super Bowl Sunday. So remember to come back and check for those other soup recipes. We'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.